we've got this article courtesy of the atlantic that i thought was really um interesting and maybe spoke about a lot of maybe illust no, maybe reflects a lot of the things that i think about when it comes to socializing and hanging out um the title here is why americans suddenly stop hanging out but i think this could be applied to any any you know the, the world right replace americans with whatever country you're you're based in because i think most places in western europe or in the western world um are suffering from this you know malaise where people just aren't socially hanging out and stuff maybe if you live in a place where you have a better standard of life or quality of life maybe if the weather's better it kind of increases your hanging out but i feel like in the uk specifically you have to plan a lot of your hangouts with your friends. They have to maybe be planned in advance. Nothing happens spontaneously. Everything revolves around drinking or eating or drugs. And it's just a bit annoying that we just don't have places just to go and hang out and socialize as people. And everybody's kind of glued to their phones, locked indoors, scared of COVID or just fucking lazy. So let's hear what this article says, courtesy of The Atlantic, written by a writer called Derek Thompson. It starts off as follows. In its earliest decades, United States was celebrated for its citizens' extroversion. Um, Americans were just setting out to build new churches and new cities. Their associations were, as Alexis would put it, um, of thousands of different types, religions, morals, and serious, futile, very general, very limited, immensely large, and very minute. Americans seemed adept at forming social groups, political associations, labor unions, local memberships. It was as if the continent itself had imbued its residents with a vibrant social metabolism, a verve for getting out and hanging out. Nothing in my view, um, Alexis wrote, deserves more attention than the intellectual and moral associations in America. Something changed in the past decades. After the 1970s, American dynamism um, declined. Americans moved less from place to place. They stopped showing up at their churches and temples. In the 1990s, the sociologist Robert Putman recognized that American social metabolism was slowing down. In the book Bowling Alone, he gathered teams, sorry, reams of statistical evidence to prove that Americans' penchant for starting and joining associations appeared to be in free fall. Book clubs and bowling leagues were going bust. That's a very good point. Book clubs. I used to be a part of a couple of book clubs, which would be no surprise to some of you based on the collection of books I have here behind me and just based on my, demure, my demeanor and how much of a fucking dork and nerd I can be. I used to be a part of a couple of book clubs, but most of them are defunct. I used to, I used to be part of a um, zine exchange, right? A place where you'd go and hang out with people who make zines and you'd exchange them. You'd read certain zines. You might get someone to work on your zine. I was a part of all these little dumb little collectives and stuff and groups. And most of them are now defunct. You can't find any of them anymore, which is really sad to be fair. Or they've moved online. Or they've moved to fucking Discord as well, which is super depressing. Um, because, you know, it's a book club and it's a zine thing. It should be tactile. It should be in person. Article continues. If Putman felt the first raindrops of an antisocial revolution in America, the downpour is fully here. And we're all getting washed away in the flood. From 2003 to 2022, American men reduced their average hours of face-to-face -face socializing by 30%. For unmarried Americans, the decline was even bigger, more than 35%. For teenagers, it was more than 45%. Boys and girls 15 to 19 reduced their weekly outgoings by more than three hours a week. In short, there is no statistical record of any other period in the US history than when people spent more time on their own wow 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 so is that true that there's more there's more if you're unmarried you hang out less than people that are married really i thought it was opposite i thought when you get married you don't have any time for you just it's just you and your wife or you and your family and you kind of just focus on your own especially if you've got kids and shit there's no time to hang out with anybody i didn't know it was the other way around okay but I guess it means that if you're married, maybe you extend your social group because by default, you might then become friends with your partner's friends, right? That might be a thing. So it continues. And so what? One might reasonably ask, a loneliness is not loneliness. Not only, not only that, but one, night might, one might point out the texture of aloneness has changed. Solitude is less solitary than ever with all calling... Um, with all the calling, texting and emailing and work chatting and DM and posting, we are producing unprecedented terabytes of interpersonal communication. If Americans were happy about themselves, about their friends and about their country, then whining about parties um, of one would feel silly. But that's probably a COVID thing as well, right? I think COVID made all of us way more, um, what's that thing called? Self-reliant. We became a lot more comfortable in our solitar solitariness, right? If that's a word. We became a lot more comfortable being on our own. I think for myself, I've always been a loner. I've always been a lone wolf, which has been both a blessing and a curse. 
But I felt like with COVID, it probably exasperated it and made it worse because I had no, I had every excuse not to go out because I'd always look for an excuse to flake. I'd always look for an excuse to cancel. I've always looked for an excuse not to go anywhere. And then COVID gave me the perfect excuse, the perfect cover, you know, even though I wasn't as scared of it as I made it seem, I was definitely using it as an excuse not to do anything. And then that kind of carried on after COVID ended because most of the work that I do and the jobs I've had in the last few years have basically required me to work remotely and I don't need to leave my house. So I don't even leave my house unless I'm going to go visit my family or, you know, hang out with the wife and children and shit. So that's basically what I do. I just stay at home. So I think that's what's basically made things way worse for me, really. Way, way, way worse. But hey, let's go on. But for Americans in the 2020, solitude, anxiety, and dissatisfaction seem to be rising in lockstep. Surveys show that Americans, and especially young Americans, have never been more anxious about their own lives or more depressed about the future of their country. <laughs> We're all walking around depressed and anxious ridden, anxiety ridden and depressed. God almighty. No wonder people are, you know what? This explains the hate online. This explains the hate. I felt like now, maybe I'm, I'm being a little bit dramatic. But I felt like nowadays there's way more vitriol. It's way more venomous. It's way more mean spirited. Some of the things you see online that might be as a consequence of people feeling way more anxious and depressed in general. So you take it out on fucking like Olivia Rodrigo. You take it out on Kylie Jenner. <laughs> you take it out on Kim Kardashian. You take it out on Brendan Shaw. You know what I mean? Because you're so fucking depressed and angry and anxious about your own life. You're like, oh, fuck this guy and his t-shirt off again. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that's what you're seeing online now. People are really, really mean. Um, teenage depression and hopelessness are setting new annual records every year. The share of young people who say that they have a close friend has plummeted. Wow. The share of young people who say they have a close friend has plummeted. Jesus. I wonder if that's a thing. I wonder if people have a statistic. I wonder if there's less kids nowadays who say they have a best friend than ever before. That might be a thing, you know. Best friends probably don't exist anymore. Americans have been so depressed about the state of the nation for so many consecutive years that by 2023, NBC pollsters said, we have never before seen this level of sustained pessimism in the 30 year plus history of the poll. <laughs> We're all pessimistic cunts. We're all pessimistic cunts. That's what we are. That makes so much sense, right? Pessimism is at, is at an all-time high. <laughs> Cynicism is at an all-time high. <laughs> Hating is at an all-time high. <laughs> People are now getting fucking contracts from streaming companies and from like podcasting companies to be full-time haters. <laughs> full-time pessimist, you know? Oh, God almighty. I don't think hanging out more will solve every problem, but I do think every social crisis in the US could be helped somewhat if people spent a little more time with other people and a little less time gazing into digital content that's designed to make us anxious and despondent about the world. But unfortunately, that isn't going to change. I know people say we should spend less time on our phone, but let's be real. That's why I say all the time about my book, about my buying book addictions, right? I've already got two here that I still haven't kind of read or taught or teared through at the moment, right? I've got the um, I've got the autobiography one of the auto, one of the autobiographies by Moby called Porcelain, and I've also got this book here called A Very Important People by Ashley Mears, which talks about the party scene and stuff, right? I know I'm a addict of book reading, but I don't encourage people to read books. I I don't use my um my book habit buying my reading habit as a way of like intellectually masturbating myself i don't try and make it look like i'm better than people even though when i read outdoors on my own i'm in a bar reading my book you know at some cocktail bar next to some candlelight i feel like a fucking intellect and i feel fucking smart and shit i don't encourage everyone to do it because i feel like this is so archaic this is so old school that most people could never do it and most people can't because unfortunately we get to a point and especially our attention spans are nowhere near where it needs to be to sit down and read a book for half an hour or if, even myself I love reading books and I find it hard to sit and read a book for an hour without touching my phone I'm always kind of itching to check in because I don't have my own, I don't have my notifications on I'm always kind of double because I find nowadays I don't know if you guys are the same I find that because I don't have my notifications on I check my phone way more <laughs> you know do you know what I mean my phone's always on silent there's no notifications no banners no nothing but because of that I feel like I check it way more so it kind of doesn't really work, right? Because I want to not have notifications, not to check my phone, but I check it more because I have notifications on. So even I find it hard as a bookworm 
as a somewhat quote unquote, you know, fake fucking intellectual. I find it hard to read books. So I think most people will find it literally impossible. But I just think it's not ever going to go back. It's never going to go backwards. Like it's only going to get worse, especially we've seen now with the Apple Vision Pro. It's only going to get worse. So we have to find a way to kind of manage it. But this idea that we are all going to unplug and we're all going to start using phones that don't have, you know, screens and are not smartphones and just you use it for text and calling. It's like, come on, man. Come on, bro. It's not happening. It's not happening. It's a bit too late now. The, the, the horse has bolted. Let's continue. And the fucking fence has completely been obliterated. Um, let's go. So the young century, this young century, Americans have collectively submitted um, to a national experiment to deprive ourselves of the camaraderie um, in the world of flesh and steel, choosing instead to grow and grow and grow the time we spend by ourselves, gazing into the screens wherein actors and influencers often engage in various acts of physical proximity that we deny ourselves. It's been a wild experiment and the results haven't been pretty. To get a crystal clear picture of how hanging out has dissipated in America, I spent the last week um uh, splick what's that spleek spleeking I don't know what that word is what splee spelunking spelunking inside the American Time Use Survey. I never seen heard of the word. What's all spelunking mean? What does that mean? Spelunking, spelunking, the exploration of caves, especially as a hobby. Okay, cool. I never heard of that term. Spelunking. How do you pronounce that? Spelunking. Spelunking. Okay, cool. Um, I spent the past week spelunking inside an American Time Use survey, an annual government poll of how people in the US spend their days. Economists at the ATUS carefully tracked time spent socializing, meaning face to face interactions for more than a dozen demographics. Broadly, real world socializing has declined for both men and women, for all ages, for all ethnicities, and for all levels of income and education. So socializing face to face, people are saying spelunky means ass play, lols. Uh, <laughs> actually, that would be actually a good gay, a new gay term, isn't it? Because I feel like, I feel like all the gay terms are overused now. They all become corny. I don't know if they've got, if I've got any members of the LGBT community in my fucking chat right now. But all these fucking, everybody's saying yas, everyone's saying mother, everyone's saying it's giving. All those terms have been, they've been fucking they've been killed they've been commoditized they've been normalized right normied like we need some new hot gay terms right and maybe spelunking is one of them babe you're spelunking right now i want to spelunk <laughs> i mean <laughs> let's go spelunking you know whatever that sh there should be something there there's something there um so socializing has declined all across the board men and women it's all gone down although covid19 clearly decreased time alone these trends predate pandemic Oh, interesting. So it's not because of the pandemic. Huh. The steepest declines have been among young people, poor people, and black Americans. Wow. Us blacks are antisocial. We're prone to violence. We love fucking twerking, chicken, watermelons, illegal guns, <laughs> having kids outside of wedlock, <laughs> multiple baby mothers, and we also are loners. Love it. Love it. Black people have the all the ingredients necessary to be like mass shooters, but we're not really mass shooters. You know what I mean? Black people growing up in poverty, growing up around crime, right? Like all that sort of stuff should really, you know, mean that you are susceptible to like be a mass shooter. But most mass shooters are white and most mass shooters come from like decent, you know, backgrounds, decent neighborhoods, you know, affluent families. So it's really interesting how that works, isn't it? Um, you don't really see a lot of like Mexican and black fucking, you know, fucking um or his story hispanic mass shooters or black mass shooters really which is odd but let's continue the steepest declines um have been among young people and poor people and black people women and 20 somethings enjoy the most social time in a given week and low-income middle-aged unmarried men seem to get together um less that that is to be that is true actually i think all the women i know in my life still have the same friends still meet them after work have drinks go to eat some food go shopping, just go to each other's houses to shoot the shit. Like, women haven't changed. I think women socialing, so, women socialising is something men should aspire to because women can just hang around with each other without it being a thing, without it involving shots or beers or baggies of drugs. It's just hanging out. I don't think guys have that ability anymore, unfortunately. 
For most groups, the decline was staggered before accelerating in 2015. Beyond in-person hanging, several other forms of socialising have declined by about a third in the past 20 years, including the share of Americans who volunteer and share of Americans who attend religious services um, over the weekend. One of the more curious trends to jump out of the data is that many Americans have traded people for pets. Now, that is depressing. That is super depressing. Over the one of the most curious trends to jump out of the data is that many Americans have traded people for pets in our social time. <laughs> so, people like Jesus Christ, bro. I don't blame some people. I don't, again, as much as I hate dogs and shit. I don't blame people who do replace people with pets because humans are fucking annoying and pets are, you know, loyal and loving to a level that a human sometimes can never usually match. Even your own parents, <laughs> even your siblings couldn't match the level of love a dog or a cat can give to you. So I understand, but that is super depressing that people are, you know, replacing pets with actual interaction with real life human beings. It continues. The average time that Americans spend with their pets has roughly doubled in the last 20 years, both because more people have adopted pets and because they spend more time with them. In 2003, a typical female pet owner spent more time socializing with humans than playing with a cat or dog. By 2022, this flipped and the average woman with a pet now spends more time actively engaged with her pet than she spends hanging out face to face with fellow humans on any given day. Wow. To be honest, if you have time to set up a separate Instagram account for your pet, you probably don't like hanging out with humans. Let's be honest. If you have a separate Instagram account for your pet where you speak for your where you write captions in your pet's voice in like third person or something, right? Or whatever, you probably don't have friends. You probably don't want friends. <laughs> you know? You probably spend most of the time by yourself and you love it. Like that's probably what happens now. And I think most of my friends that I know that have pets have a separate social media account for their pet. And it's got like thousands of followers. So, you know, you definitely are creating bespoke content. I mean, you're doing photo shoots. <laughs> People that do that don't have time to meet someone for a drink. Fucking hell. The hangout depression is particularly bad for teenagers. According to ATUS, teens and young adults saw by far the largest dip in socializing, especially since 2010. In fact, it's genuinely difficult to find any category of play that isn't experiencing some kind of mayday, mayday descent among the groups. Teens are dating less, playing fewer um, youth sports, spending less time with their friends and making fewer friends to begin with. In the late 1970s, more than half of the 12th graders um, got together with their buddies almost every day. By 2017, only 28 percent. God damn. There's very clearly been a striking decline in in-person socializing among teens and young adults. Whether it's going to parties, driving around in cars, going to a mall, or just anything that has to do with getting together in person, says Jean Twang, um, the psychology professor of San Diego. I know for me, in the UK specifically, the reason why a lot of kids don't really hang out is because there's not a lot of places that they can hang out. So when I was growing up, we had these things called youth clubs. Um, we, no, when I was growing up, we had after school clubs and we had youth clubs. After school clubs basically were, you know, they basically opened the library um, until like, let's say 6 p.m. So maybe your school closes at three. They open the library from three to six and it just allow people to kind of use the internet as much as they want, fall around. They might have you let you have a speaker. They might put out some biscuits and some drinks and shit. And that'll be about it. And that was a way to kind of support kids who maybe had parents that worked many jobs, maybe who didn't have any parents, just to kind of give them something to kind of distract themselves so they didn't have to go straight from school to home and kind of, you know, get depressed again. Then you had youth clubs on top of that. So you had the after school club, which was you being in school. And then you also had a youth club. A youth club would be like a center where essentially there'd be like, there'd be like um, youth activated events in there. There'd be a snooker table. There might be a sports hall. There might be a studio there for you to make music and shit. And there'll be, might be like a little trade craft class in there. All these really cool things that you can do to keep youth engaged. And those are usually in like really disadvantaged neighborhoods, right? To kind of keep the youth off the streets. But for some reason over the years, they cut funding for those things. So the funding went for those things. So now there's no after school clubs. There's no youth clubs. So those same kids that still need that kind of attention, need that kind of care, need those kind of distractions to keep them off the streets. Because there are some kids out there who will inevitably end up being a bad kid, like a you know gangster, wherever it may be. But kids like myself, 
who I would, you know, I wouldn't say I was naughty, but I was susceptible to bad influences. Like I could easily get fucking roped into something because I was just hanging around. But because I always had distractions of like after school clubs and youth clubs, I avoided becoming a part of a gang. I avoided going to prison. I avoided all these fucking crazy shit just because I was occupied. That was it. Not because I was special, not because I was super smart, but because I was just occupied, you know, on, you know, fucking talking to random girls and chat rooms in some internet cafe somewhere. Right. That was what kind of kept me occupied. We don't have that anymore. So that kind of, you know, leads to kids being more outside, be more outside, leads to kids, you know, kids already are frustrated and bored and shit. They do dumb stuff and down and there we go. They're in trouble. So I really do wish there was more of an avenue or more of a place where kids could kind of let some steam off and those type of things and it, it could be more encouraged instead of having people just go straight from school all the way to home it's you know what i mean it's like you're going from school straight to your phone straight to home locked in again not really socializing people and it's not really allowing you to develop or to mature in any kind of meaningful way or become a valuable member of society i asked twing or Twenge, or however you pronounce this person's name, if, he, if she should identify large differences by gender or ethnicity um, among teenagers. She pulled data from the University of Michigan Monitoring of the Future, a decades-old survey of teens, which we've used to make the following chart, the first flow of the share of 12th grader boys and girls who say that they go to friends with two or more times a week. From 1976 to 2022, the number of socializings uh, fell by a similar figure, about 30%. Hangouts declined a bit more among black teens and white teens so everybody's hanging out less which is super depressing i feel like nowadays what i've seen like i said before is that i've seen more people having to be active in their hanging out and have to be purposeful having to kind of you know basically create calendar invites for their hangouts ahead of time to schedule people in to make sure people kind of attend and go to these sort of thing which is incredibly incredibly depressing um so that spontaneity is kind of gone and especially in a city like london I feel like whenever I've traveled to places that are a bit warmer or places that have a bit more of a social aspect, like even if I go to places outside of London, I go to Liverpool, I go to Manchester, I'm going to Newcastle next actually very soon. But all those places in the north where they're a bit more family orientated, they're a little bit more friendship group orientated, it's so different from London on the weekends. You go out there on the city centre in Manchester and you'll see groups of people. Like you see a whole family going out together for for, for, like for dinner. You see a whole group of girls going out together for drinks, similar with boys. But in London, you see loads of groups of like two or one or three people. That's it, like strangers. Never really groups of like big friends or family. And so everyone's kind of individual. So I feel like maybe London specifically has that issue because everyone's kind of individual and life here is really hard and people are struggling. Uh, but then I feel like, you know, that kind of, funneling the hangouts only in bars and restaurants also doesn't help things because i feel like in the recent years there's been a big trend in people especially my friends in my social group who have kind of gone off drinking and doing drugs so a lot of my friends during the pandemic or maybe just because they just grew up decided hey i'm not really into the raves anymore because even i found myself even though i go to a lot of parties by myself anyway i found that even the friends that i did go to parties with have completely been disinterested and turned off from going to parties they don't care about festivals they don't care about raves anymore so those groups of people are completely gone from the clubbing scene they've completely disappeared and um, so have a lot of the young kids sometimes you go out you see some young kids but there's a lot of young kids that don't go to raves at all so it's a weird mix of people that you see when you go out a lot of like delinquents and druggies and alkies like myself but you don't really see a lot of fresh new people anymore or the people you used to see before in the past so if you are that person who doesn't drink who doesn't do drugs um, who doesn't want to be in a bar also it's really difficult to kind of see your friends because that's all they do you know so it becomes and people don't really go to each other's houses anymore either i feel like people are a little bit more protective of their own personal space so it's it's a difficult situation to be involved in but i feel like if anything the best thing to come out of it is that you now know who your actual friends are so even though you don't have as big as a group as you probably did have pre-pandemic the friends that you do have even if it's one you know that that's your fucking friend that's your ride or die because you know you still keep in touch you're still familiar you hang out from time to time whatever it may be because all those kind of like you know loosey-goosey here and there friends have gone so the ones that are left are should be your real ones but it's just a shame that kind of spontaneity that kind of randomness of friendships and hanging out and stuff has completely gone and now people are legitimately scheduling times where they can hang out with their friends like like they're doing a fucking meeting at work that is really really depressing but you know i guess it's the nature of the game i guess that is the nature of the game <laughs>